Cobbiz. Hello viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel Cobbiz. Today we will understand in this video when a project proponent will need an environmental management plan and how can one develop this plan for their project. First, let's understand what an EMP or an environmental management plan is. It is like a guidance document that is created to show how the environmental impacts of a proposed project will be mitigated. When a project has the potential to impact the environment in which it is being developed, the plan lays down the detailed mitigative and compensatory measures from the project proponent side with an aim to avoid, minimize and manage these impacts in an ecologically acceptable manner. Also, if the mitigation measures are not feasible or sufficient, the plan may also include compensatory measures. Environmental management plans are developed during the environmental impact assessment after the TOR has been issued by the appraisal authority. Now, what are the types of environmental management plan? So, as this management planning depends upon the type of the project, the popular types of environmental management plan includes Construction Environmental Management Plan or CEMP Demolition Environmental Management Plan or DEMP Operational Environmental Management Plan or OEMP Now, how does an EMP help in mitigating the environmental impact? Let's understand. A detailed plan will help in the management and reduction of the overall impacts on the environment on social and economic front. EMP also helps to minimize waste generation and pollution, encourage judicious use of natural resources, ensure safety, welfare and good health of the workforce, ensure effective operation of all control measures, vigilance against probable disasters and accidents, monitoring of cumulative and long-term impacts, and ensure effective operation of all control measures. Now coming on how a project proponent can develop an environmental management plan. A good environmental management plan should describe the training that must be implemented which will include the following. Site inductions, identification of critical points of environmental value and any relevant matters of significance to the environment and understanding the requirements of the EMP and the associated roles of the individual. Environmental incident emergency response procedures and site environmental controls. Now every training should be documented including the person receiving the training, the date at which the training was received, the name of the person delivering the training and the description of the training. Now let's come to the process of environmental management planning. So step 1 includes environmental policy. The process of developing an EMP begins with the establishment of an environmental policy that is linked to the organization's objective. Step 2 is planning, identifying the process, resources and significant impacts by identifying pollution prevention opportunities and developing objectives and targets for improved efforts. Step 3 is the implementation, defining the structure, responsibilities and programs, implementing training and creating an EMS documentation including the document controls and record keeping. Also, the plan should involve communication of the EMS to the personnel developing and implementing the standard operating procedure. Step 4 is checking. Monitoring and measuring issue and cause identification, corrective and preventive action execution and EMS review are all part of checking and a corrective action process. Step 5 is review. Upper management analysis of the EMS including the outcomes of the internal evaluation during the management review process. Changes to the EMS are made when needed to assure compliances. The management review is intended to guarantee that the EMS is continually improved considering the outcomes of the checking and the corrective actions performed in step 4. Now let's come to the documents that will be needed while developing an environmental management plan. These will include project related activity specifics like project area split, water requirement, trash generation etc, pollution in the air, ground and rivers production of noise and vibration as well as light and heat emissions, possibility of accidents, variables with a cumulative or consequential impact, general project information, environmentally sensitive areas within a certain radius of the project site, site or layout plan, proof of installed machinery, proof of land ownership, ID proof of the signatory, quality test reports, proof of mitigations adopted. Finally, let's understand the process of reporting. The process of reporting during an EMP is as crucial as the implementation of the plan. 
a typical environmental management strategy will have reporting systems for two reasons reporting arrangements help in the implementation and external reporting external reports may include reports to the regulator on environmental incidents reports to stakeholders reports to inform plan reviews and reports to satisfy the reporting obligations of the permit conditions also a list of required reports including appropriate monitoring for non compliance is also needed now if you are a project proponent you must be able to identify which kind of emp will be required for your project and understand how important is an emp report during the environmental clearance process so if you are looking for an emp you can contact with our environmental experts from the details shown we at cobbes assist you in all your environmental compliances requirement related to your ec so this was all for today's video please like and share if you found the information useful see you in the next video thank you for watching